A long time ago, I remember watching an episode of The Simpsons where Bart breaks into a storage closet. He finds a whole wall full of megaphones, so what Bart does is lines up ten of them in a row and screams into the megaphones. The resulting sound blast blows out all of the windows in Springfield and all of the beers in Homer's fridge. As a kid, I thought this was totally awesome, but as a slightly bigger kid, I'm worried about making a mess in the fridge. No, I'm not. I just ordered 10 megaphones online and they should be here any minute. I got 10 megaphones and this genetic testing kit from 23andMe. They're sponsoring this video. I'll tell you more about that at the end. I also got this sound level meter, so let's take a couple measurements before we start the test. The ambient level in the garage seems to be about 55. All right, so we took some measurements and we discovered that the vacuum cleaner was between 80 and 90 decibels, depending on, you know, how accurate this thing is. But that's something we can all relate to. A vacuum cleaner is very annoying, but it's not quite loud enough to hurt our ears yet. Permanent hearing damage starts to occur somewhere around 120 decibels. And that's like front row seats at a really loud rock concert. I have a feeling like these are going to be pretty loud. Not rock concert loud, but loud enough to annoy my neighbors for sure. So we're going to take this experiment down to the park and get it set up. So first we're just going to be testing one megaphone and then we're going to try all of them and see if it makes it that much louder. All right, Sandra, you ready? I'm going to turn it up. Testing. 76.7. Okay, one more time. Testing. Now, what about if I just yell? Testing! Seven, 67. 67? We had a bit of fun, then got started on the very delicate operation of setting up all the megaphones in a row without having them squeal back at us. Shh. Okay, I got it. They're all on. They're only kind of doing a feedback loop right now. Okay, maybe a lot. We just have to be really quiet. Are you ready? <laughs> Testing! 77. Really? Yeah. One more time. Testing! 81. So Sandra says it didn't sound any louder down there, but it sounded a lot more distorted. You know, the power supply in there can only amplify the sound so much and I think that's what's happening. And instead of amplifying the sound, it's actually just distorting the sound 10 times until by the time it gets to the last one, it's just feedback and garbled garbage. Well, my ears weren't ringing yet, so we decided to hook up 10 megaphones in a circle to create a literal feedback loop. Look at this maxed out at 120. Yeah, I know, it's kind of disappointing. We didn't create a huge shockwave and blow out all the lights in the stadium, but that feedback loop was actually pretty amazing that it got to 120 decibels, and that's actually 16 times louder than the vacuum cleaner was. And trust me, my ears are, got a little mild case of tinnitus from that bad boy. For every 10 decibel increase in sound, the perceived loudness is doubled, but only up to a point. You see, there's actually a limit to how loud sounds can be here on Earth in the atmosphere, and that is 194 decibels. Now, to understand that, you need to understand how sound works. I think this is the best animation that shows how sound really works. See, when you're talking, it's not actually just going through the air. Your sound is the air, and it's just molecules bouncing off of other molecules. So you see those black bars moving along. Those are regions of high pressure. And now the space in between those, where there's only a little bit of air molecules, that's a zone of low pressure. Now, there can only be so much low pressure before it turns into a vacuum, and that's no air molecules at all. And you can't go lower than a vacuum. Really, the maximum sound pressure level is determined by the density of the medium that the sound waves are traveling through. So in the air, it's limited to 194 decibels. Anything beyond that is a shock wave. It's the air molecules are moving so fast, they're pushing everything else and carrying everything else with it. In water, sound can be much louder than it is on the surface. For example, the sonar that the Navy uses to do ocean research, that commonly operates at like 230 decibels. Now, that would kill us. Easily that would kill us if we were underwater near one of those ships when it pinged. And that's actually a theory why whales and dolphins will beach themselves, hop out of the water to get away from the super loud noise coming from the sonar. 
Anyway, I learned a lot from this video, but I still have a question. What do I do with all these extra megaphones? Well, I can strap a megaphone and a walkie-talkie to my drone to keep my girlfriend motivated. And I can't sing the actual song because it's copyright. Oh. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to break a wine glass using a megaphone. The first thing you need to do is figure out the resonant frequency of the glass. And you can do that just by folding up a piece of paper, putting it on the glass, and then sweeping through the frequencies until you find the frequency where it starts to jump around the most. The next thing we need to do is turn the volume way up and you're ready to break a wine glass. Don't look at me like that. I said we'd break it using a megaphone, not with the sound from the megaphone. Earlier in the video, I mentioned partnership with the company 23andMe. They do genetic testing and can tell you all sorts of cool things about your ancestry, genetic risk factors, and just really all the cool stuff that's locked inside your DNA. The name 23andMe references that our DNA is organized into 23 pairs of chromosomes. When you spit into the tube and send it back through the mail, it arrives in a lab where scientists analyze your chromosomes and chop them up into little pieces which include all of your genes. Just like a computer program, our DNA contains a code that we can identify. And just like the code that was specifically written for this button, genes contain specific codes to certain parts of our body. 23andMe cracks this code to give you fun information like where your ancestors are from, what kind of food you like, how much caffeine you're likely to consume, what is your muscle composition, and how much Neanderthal DNA is in your DNA. So if you'd like to learn more information about yourself and show your support for my channel, head on down to 23andMe.com backyard and you can order your kit there. In a few weeks, I'm going to be getting my results back and I want to give you guys a chance to win a kit of your own and this cool aluminum water ball casting. This isn't a part of the 23andMe sponsorship or anything. I just really like you guys and I think it'd be pretty fun. So whoever can guess the results to these five tests wins. I'm gonna be making a video of my results in a couple weeks when I get the results back and I'll announce the winners there. So see you then, good luck.